Good morning, everyone. Even those re that are watching the recording. So today we'll, we'll continue the um, the meditations on the um, uncertainty and un untimeliness of, of death. Um, and I think we'll we'll spend a little time doing some nine round breathing. Maybe it's new for some people, so I'll do a bit of explanation about it. It'll be a little different. So we try to bring our focus, <clears throat> our attention into this session and just leave behind whatever was happening before. It's almost like you're, you're coming home after being out and you close the door and you're leaving everything that was going on before. You're just leaving it outside. But nothing else matters right now. So whether we were working, reading, exercising, talking with a friend, we just put it all to the side. And today, think about your motivation for coming to this session and your motivation to contemplate death, contemplate Bam Rim, and to meditate on it. That meta motivation set. Try to draw your attention closer to your breath. And just feel whatever you feel, wherever you feel the breath. The inhale. A slight pause between the inhale and the exhale. The exhale. All of that air being expelled. And then again, an, a little pause before the inhale starts. We just try to observe this 
flow. Maybe you can actually feel that uh, the breath, when you inhale, it expands and it's not just in the lungs. But it's expanding through the body. Now that we've uh, we've settled the mind a bit, we can we can settle it a bit further. Um, doing the nine round breathing, so maybe some of you were were, were there when uh, Geshe La. I think he's done it many times in the in the center. Um, but if you weren't there, then you can explain shortly. So we imagine that just at our forehead, there's a uh, the central channel starts and it kind of curves up and then it goes straight down and it's just in front of the spine. So it's... Uh, a vertical tube it's just in front of the spine it's about an inch in diameter it goes all the way down just um, just below the, the belly button and then there's two channels the right and the left channel that um, start at the nostrils and then they go up and then they are alongside the central channel and they go down and they also end just below the, the belly button and um, at their end they kind of curve up slightly and point inside the uh, central channel so there's just these three channels and uh the right and the left channel are about the diameter of a straw, you can imagine. So they're smaller. So there's these three tubes, three channels. When we do the nine round breathing, it's um, three sets of three. And the first set, we inhale through the right nostril, and then we exhale through the left nostril. And the second set is inhaling through the left, exhaling through the right. And the third set is inhaling through both nostrils. And then we will actually exhale at the bottom of the uh, right and left channels into the central channel. 
and there shouldn't be a thought that you're you're suffocating, but you're actually breathing life into the central channel, into the heart. And I think Geshe he is uh, using his right index finger to, to help close the nostrils, to, to help um, um, direct the breathing. So you can do that, or you can just imagine um, Imagine when you're breathing, you're breathing into the right or out to the left or vice versa. So we'll start. We'll close the left nostril and inhale through the right nostril, drawing the air up into the right channel, drawing it down and then it passes over to the left channel. And we exhale through the left channel. And we move our finger to the right nostril. And we inhale again to the right. Drawing up the air, drawing it down. Exhaling up through the left channel to the left nostril. One more time. Now for the second set of three, we are inhaling through the left nostril and closing the right nostril. Drawing up the air, drawing it down. And then exhaling up through the right nos uh, channel, through the right nostril. And then for the third set, we're inhaling through both nostrils and we're drawing the air down to the, to the belly button, the end of the channels. And then we're exhaling up into the central channel and expanding our heart. We're extending our, our heart chakra or our, our sense of compassion. So when you have the time, then I recommend you can uh, do the nine round breathing. And maybe do um, maybe three, three, uh, three rounds. Uh, the yogis would probably do seven or maybe 21, depending, yeah. But it's, it is a bit difficult and technical at the beginning, but 
with practice, it, it becomes easier. And it's a good exercise to, to really um, cleanse these channels and open the body. So it's... Uh, helps us access the mind, free the mind, yeah? So last week we... Um, We're uh, contemplating this uh, this life, this diminishing life. That it's diminishing without any interruption, and um, nothing can be added to it. So we can think now that. Um, There's no certainty when I shall die. So we contemplate this uh, uncertainty of the time of death. And we contemplate this uncertainty of the time of death to understand that we must engage in the uh, practice of dharma when now and we shouldn't procrastinate why because at the present we have this life we're in our body That it could just as well happen today that this body and mind will separate. That this body will become a corpse, ripe for a burial or a cremation. So in our current times, uh, the life is, or the lifespan is, um, it's a variable uh, number. It's not a finite number, right? And in the Buddhist text, they say that um, there was a time when people lived uh, countless years so much longer lives than we're living today in this uh, world and they say that one day this will happen again but before that happens um, this typical human lifespan will actually decrease and it's interesting because we see that happening now, right? With all of our technology and expansion over the years, we extended life, life spans extended just over the last hundred years, right? And now we're, we've seen this uh, peak and now it starts to go down again. Just in a very short time. And it was, uh, I think the Buddha said that... Um, There will be a time when the lives 
are getting shorter and it'll be so short that when someone lives to the age of 10, that will be considered long. But besides that, uh, we can't predict on the basis of our current age how much longer uh, we will live. As we can see that many young people pass away and we can see that many older people live for many more years so just because of a number today and the age there's no indication there's just no certainty of when a person will will pass away. And it's interesting when we look at our mind, right? That this uncertainty in the case of other people it's kind of easy to apply, right? But we need to apply it to ourselves. We need to realize that the time of our own death is completely uncertain. And therefore, we need to practice Dhamma right away. We shouldn't hesitate, right? I guess, what are we hesitating about? I don't think we're hesitating about the uncertainty, but more that we don't have this realization. It's not sinking in our heart. Well, we can see that some people, they, they get up in the morning and by the time the afternoon comes, they're, they're dead. Or other people, they, they go to sleep expecting to wake up, but they never do. There's 
there's countless examples of of these situations where a person was doing one thing one moment and the next moment their life has ended. And this uncertainty, it's it's not a, a scary thought, it's not a depressing thought, right? It's an inspiring thought. To inspire us to use our time wisely, to engage with the Dharma, to develop our compassion, to expand our uh, hearts towards others. So just seeing that this is happening to other people and just seeing that someone is alive and, and they're not alive the next moment. That's good. It's a good uh, understanding. But it's not enough because we have to bring it to our, ourselves. We have to understand that we are no different. We need to apply that example to oneself. To see that our lifespan as well is uncertain. contemplate this we can start to contemplate all of the causes of prolonging a life of nurturing life and the causes of death and when we start to look at them there's a lot more conditions that allow for death than there are for life Life is very fragile, so we need to cherish it and cherish it and use it wisely. As we bring this, this meditation to an end, we can dedicate all these contemplations, all the merit that we've developed, dedicate them that uh, may we practice fruitfully in this lifetime and develop the habits or imprints that will be, uh, that will ripen in the future lives. So that we continue to practice we continue to help others and develop a good heart
Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah.